Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. I would like to talk about bone marrow. This is uh, Jonathan had a request from last week. And, uh, you know, let's go a little deeper into the idea of, of enhancing bone marrow. And so the idea behind this is that humans are programmed to start losing bone mass as you go through your life. And uh, you, um, uh, that, that quit, oh, there it is. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the monitor kicked out for a moment there. So as your program, so that you start actually in your 20s, you start to just minutely start to lose bone mass. And then by the time you hit your 40s, there are serious hormonal changes that occur that then it starts to accelerate. And by the time you get to your 60s, 70s, whatever, then you start to, it starts to really deteriorate. You get into osteopenia, which is a beginnings of bone, bone density loss into uh, osteoporosis, which is, you know, you get these really uh, brittle bones. And that's a, it's a big problem for people as they get older. So, uh, in the Chinese internal martial arts, they thought, hey, we don't need to do that. Let's, um, let's have this steel bar wrapped in cotton idea and keep extending it as long as we can so that you're able to increase your bone density as you get older. And um, just a regular practice, regular practice is going to help with that. You will get some better from that. You'll get even more if you do certain things which are directed toward increasing your, your density. And at the, at the core of that, and no pun intended, is the bone marrow, which is um, creates the um, conditions for this, this, these dense bones. And bone marrow is where the uh, blood cells, both white and red are produced, and they go throughout your whole body and restore everything. So as you get older, the tendency is for the lipocytes, which are the fat cells, um, they tend to take over the bone marrow and your nice pink red bone marrow of your youth turns kind of into this gray yellowish kind of icky stuff that the chi gets slows down dramatically as you do that. And also your ability to produce blood cells, healthy blood cells also diminishes. So by having healthy bone marrow, you can increase health not just in the bones, creating more bone density, but throughout the whole system. Everybody gets happy because you're, you're directing your attention to actually activating this bone marrow thing. There's also in, uh, in Chinese medicine and Chinese um, uh, Qigong and whatnot is um, the idea of the bone marrow is connected to your brain, that the cells that that become brain tissue are animated from the bone marrow. I'm not, I've never actually did the research on it to see whether that holds up with, uh, with more recent research, but uh, from a chi aspect, it does. So the more you can cleanse your bone marrow, then you can actually uh, energize your brain so that that also tends to get a little dodgy as you get older, unless you do something about it, in which case you can actually enhance your brain health as you get older. So um, this bone marrow thing is, is, is a cool idea. It's also tied very directly to blood circulation. Since we're talking about having healthy blood cells, uh, the quality of the cells that are being circulated is much better. And that means that you're clearing out debris. Chi is flowing better because you're not having these blockages throughout your body. And also, uh, in addition to the quality of the cells 
improve, so does the blood flow, the amount of flow that is occurring. So you get into this the ability to for the cells to sneak into these tiny little spots, which would get ordinarily clogged with debris. They you get what's called microcirculation, which is it, it goes between the the, the cells, you know, even finer than the capillaries, they actually kind of squeeze into these, these very tiny places and energize your whole system. So you, in essence, you're at the very least slowing down the inevitable entropy that, that consumes us all. And at, uh, at the, the, the best, you are kind of putting the brakes on and firing the retro rockets and getting a little more youthful in your old age. And um, so you're actually, you feel it throughout the whole system. So the bones are directly related to kidney, the kidney um, uh, jing. And this is your, this is, uh, uh, related to your primordial chi. This is the chi that you come into this life with. And so the amount of kidney energy that you have is directly related to your life force. And so the basic idea is that if you run out of this primordial chi, this kidney energy, then you keel over and and die, but it's more like you uh, you gradually fade away. So if we can enhance your kidney energy, that's a good thing, and you can actually uh, uh, feel more vitality throughout the whole system. And the kidney energy is a very yin energy, so it's very supportive, nurturing. It establishes the foundation of your body mind foundation of your your health so we want to get that you know, we want to feel into that so a lot of the stuff that we're doing on a regular basis in these Tuesday night we bit of alchemy we are working on enhancing the energy connection increasing the chi flow throughout the whole system by tapping into the big chi by actually, connecting up to the earth and sky. And, and so you're not just dependent on your, your limited resources that are, that are stuck inside your skin, but you're actually able to plug into the big chi and create more of this, this vitality. You're able to replenish the energy that you may have squandered away in your dissolute youth and uh, actually be able to start to feel more alive, more vibrant, more, um, well, healthier. So as you go along, so getting to that kidney there, it's also directly related to your connective tissue system because the, the, bone, the bones themselves are actually part of the connective tissue system. They're a very dense part of the connective tissue system. And if the connective tissue system is operating at its optimum, then new cells are being created, old cells are being discarded, and that's boom, boom, boom. Everybody's chugging along and you're doing a great, you know, you're, you're feeling that vibrancy. So what we've been exploring for a couple of decades now with this is the ability to enhance your connective system, tissue system by using energetic coherence and tensegrity. That is by creating tensegrity, that is extending the connective tissue so that you're creating a little bit of stretch there in the, the fascia, the ligaments, the, te the tendons, um, et cetera. You are, you're creating this and it, creates an energy flow. And that allows for everybody to, to function in a state of wholeness. And then 
the corresponding the yin side or the yang side of that that's the yin side the yang side of that is the energy it's like oh you know you're you're feeling more alive you're feeling more the energy the tingling the pulsing and with that the energy leads the chi or leads the the chi leads the blood so you're getting that enhanced circulation by doing that so all this is background and um, a lot of we've covered before but i would like to uh, wanted to uh, give you a, a picture a context for the exercises we're going to be doing because what we'll want to do is to not just make it one set of bone marrow exercises like the one I showed you. I, I mean, it's a, it's a great one, the one we do. We'll, we'll do a little bit of a, um, a review on that as well. But I'd like to take it a little bit farther because it's something that I do all day. You know, it, it's not something that, you know, you have to really kind of get set up to do. You can include it into walking down the street or just standing in line or or you know lying in bed you can you can just give yourself a little hit every now and then and so rather than it just being a big process uh it becomes something that you just becomes part of your daily maintenance and as a result you will get this uh, uh, a, a refresher every time you do that. So um, uh, if you're looking for a more elaborate exercise that focuses on this, I have, I have, um, I wrote a blog, I think 2016 on this. I think we did one of these for this, uh, this set uh, last fall. But uh, there's also online, you can find a whole bunch of uh, really good, uh, bone marrow breathing exercises and and knock yourself out one thing you're going to run into with that and something that i would caution against is that a lot of them have to do with um packing it's a qigong packing and i'm not a huge fan of this uh packing i think it it, it can be very effective in the right hands and if you're experienced at it then you have a you know someone who can guide you through it i think you, it can be effective for some things but i think it also has some um I, i'd be cautious about it and the idea of packing is that you you hold your breath and you kind of mm, push the uh the chi into into the bones and um like I say, it's, it will give you a result and it will do the job, but I think it also has, um, you, we can do it a whole lot more effortlessly, gracefully than that. And, uh, um, and just as a, something we're going to play with here is the concept behind packing is that you're creating this uh, electrical charge is called pressure electricity, or it's called piezoelectricity. And piezoelectricity is when any any time that you squeeze uh, your bones or tissues, it will create an electric charge. And um, uh, so, I think it's valuable to go there, and we're going to do that right now, actually, to just get the feeling of that. Because once you can identify the piezoelectric feeling, then you can create it just by creating tensegrity in the in the system, and you don't need to uh, you don't need to go through the whole rigmarole of the packing. So uh, that's my uh, my and rigmarole is um, pejorative, and I apologize for those people who like to pack because that it's actually not rigmarole. It's a valid exercise, just not one that I'm, I'm particularly crazy about. So you get the, um, you get the, once you identify the, the, the piezoelectric feeling, then you can get, you can get it at, at a subtler level, which is also uh, allows to permeate into the bone marrow. 
So what I've talked about here is it's important to enhance your bone health. It's important to enhance, enhance your bone marrow to actually reverse the entropy that is occurring as a, as a natural effect of getting older. And so that you can create healthy blood cells as well as lymphocytes as well. So you're getting those, you know, helps, you know, the, your lymphatic system is also enhanced by having a healthy bone marrow and increases your blood circulation, your microcirculation, et cetera. And that we can do this also as something that you just kind of fit into your daily practice. So just uh, for right now, just get, get the idea, to get the idea, you just, what you want to do is grab your forearm with your hand and squeeze really hard squeeze really hard and, and then let go and feel into your arm and notice the activity is going on there. Notice the sensations that are occurring there. Now do it again. And this time squeeze, but also feel, get inside your receiving arm, your forearm and feel what's going on there. So you're tuning into the receptive part and then let that go and now feel into that. And notice that there is a change. You can compare the two arms and notice that one arm, the one you've been working on, feels different than the other one. And that's because you've created this change, this you've created an electrical charge in addition to other things going on there. You've rearranged a few cell walls and things like that as you're doing it, depending on how hard you squeezed. But you got you got some different. So if you then take the take the same arm and make a fist and really tense all the muscles in your forearm, really just as tight as you can in your fist and everything, and then ah, then let go. And then just feel feel the effect. Compare that to your other hand, your other arm, and notice that oh, there's something going on there. Okay, there is a feeling, a difference in the feeling. So what we want to do, and the key to all this from my perspective, and this is what I'm trying to bring to the table here, is that the key to understanding all this stuff is not in memorizing a whole bunch of elaborate exercises, but it is in learning how to access consciously your sensory neural network. That is that you're able to actually feel, but not just telling your story a story about what you're feeling, but actually just feel it. And you say, you know, you can tell yourself a story afterward. And after you get the hang of feeling it, then you can tell yourself a story while you're doing it. And you can say, wow, that feels really good. I feel the increase of blood flow and uh, I feel that electrical uh, charge. Da, 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 da. You can identify it once you can control that part of your brain which is able to feel things, to be able to activate that sensory neural network. And once you can do that, then you are able to use different parts of your brain simultaneously. This is when you're in a super conscious state. You're able to activate a whole brain coherence. And in doing, you start to increase your ability to consciously go to different parts of your brain at, at, at will. You are, you're driving the bus at that point, more so than before. No one ever has complete control, but you have more control if you can consciously, mindfully activate these different parts. And, and when you can do that, then you're changing your neural capacity, as well as you're changing your energy and your physicality. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, we're going to do a review of the exercise that I showed you before, just to get the hang of, because this is a really handy one to, you know, I'll do it. I'll just do a couple of, you know, back and forth and uh, at a time. You don't have to go into it for a half hour or anything. You can do it for, for a minute and get something out of it once you get the hang of this feeling thing. All right. So 
Now you can do this one sitting down. We'll, we'll do some others standing up, but let's just start with this one sitting down. And put your hands in your lap, put your feet on the floor. So you want to feel the balls of your feet as they, as your feet are on the floor, reach with the crown of your head, open the jade pillow gate. And point your index finger of your left hand. So just by pointing that you're creating a piezoelectric charge. And you can feel something going on there, some tingling, pulsing, some electrical flow, something like that. And then that creates an energetic coherence. Now, imagine that you're breathing in through your fingertips, like you got little vacuum cleaners and you're sucking in the nature chi, the big chi, through your hand and directing it up your arm, up your shoulder, and allow it to swirl around the bones in your arm. And we're gonna hold the breath for, for a second here and, and just allow that to permeate into, through the pores in the bone, into the bone marrow. Good, and now you're gonna exhale, point with your other hand, your right hand, and exhale through the fingertips of your right hand. And you can imagine that you're breathing in a white mist coming in through your, your left arm and you're exhausting a gray, funky mist as it cleans out the marrow. You do that. And then we're going to go on the other side. You point with the right index finger. You create that energetic coherence. You breathe in through the fingertips, little vacuum cleaners circulated around the bone marrow hold and allow that to permeate into the bone marrow. And exhale through your left hand. And just notice something changed. Just by doing it one, one each side, something changed. And you don't have to uh, hit the home run each time. You can just, just feel something, something changed. We'll do it again. Breathe in through the, through the left hand, point the index finger. Allow that. And this time you're not going to push it into the bones. You're just going to allow that to settle in there and then exhale and out through the, the fingertips of the right hand. And notice that, oh, even though you didn't do the, the clenching, you didn't do any squeezing this time, you felt something. So we're starting to fine tune our perception, our feeling state, our interoception, looking inward, trying to fine tune that so that we can get aware of greater insubstantiality as we do this. Now we're gonna breathe in through the right hand. You point the finger, breathe into the fingertips, up the right arm, swirl it around, allow it to settle into the right for the right arm, allow it to settle in the bone marrow, and then exhale through the left hand, cleaning out. And just feel into that and notice that there's something going on. And just appreciate that. Appreciate that, oh, there's something going on. I don't have to understand it right now. Got an idea that's maybe doing me some good and you, and you play with that, right? So now we're gonna go to the feet. So use the left foot, just press down lightly with your, the big toe in your left foot, just feel that. And then breathe into the toes and up to the left leg, up to the hip. And here you wanna squeeze that in, just kind of hold your breath, squeeze that in, just get the, get the feeling, the leg might be a little different than the arm. And then exhale through the, big, the toes in the right foot. And notice that something changed. Now press down with the big toe of the right foot. Breathe into the toes of the right foot, up the, 
up the uh, the leg, feel the leg, allow, squeeze into that, feel it, allow it to penetrate into the bone marrow in your in your leg bones, and then exhale through the, the toes and the left foot. And just notice your whole body is starting to feel different now. You're getting uh, uh, the it's creating a resonant field throughout the whole system. Now this time we're going to do it. We're not going to squeeze this time. We're just going to breathe into the toes. Feel that press down with that big toe. Feel breathe into the toes. And allow that to settle into the bone marrow and then exhale out to the right foot. And pause and feel. Press down with the big toe and the right foot. Breathe in through the toes of the right foot, up the leg. Feel it settling into the bone marrow. And exhale through the left foot. And just notice that something changed. So when I say feel into the bone marrow, When you when you felt that you knew, you could feel the the hand the arm it's a very substantial. Whenever you squeeze, there's still something substantial, but there's also something very insubstantial there, and the, the the activity is going on. So at the core of these bones, there's the bone marrow, and you may feel it at first just as a negative space as a space where the density of the bone is not happening. It's more insubstantial. But as you start to play with these things, and you start to attune more and more to the insubstantiality, then you notice the bone marrow, you feel into the bone marrow as a a conduit in which this is flowing. It's like water flowing through a through a pipe. And you'll feel the bone marrow as the the place where all that water is happening, where all that flow is going on. And it's something you just you get more and more attuned to the insubstantiality. And then you start to notice fluctuations in the circulation of your blood, not just in the bone marrow, but everywhere. You know, sometimes I'll just sit for a while and just feel my blood. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but that's, <laughs> you know, I'm just feeling into the circulation that's occurring in my body because that's really cool is to be a bystander to all this activity is going on there. There's, you know, I'm in stillness, but there's so much motion occurring inside. And I believe that by bringing awareness to this flow, to this activity, that the chi, it follows my awareness because the E leads the chi, the chi leads the blood. So, the blood is, I believe, getting energized, getting more chi by doing that. So again, this is something that we're not having to learn a whole elaborate qigong set in order to do. We are learning how to do this thing, which is feel in a variety of different contexts so we can, we can apply it anywhere. Okay, before we do the uh, the next exercise, any questions, thoughts, complaints? Anybody? All good, all good. Richard, you're on mute. I, I just think sometimes when I do things like this, that um, I really tune in to how real it is. Because I think to myself, if I'm listening to my body with a stethoscope, 
you know, I can hear the blood running through my arteries and veins and even my capillaries. So I just say to myself, I can hear that. I can sense that if I can just become sensitive enough to it. Because it is there, it is real, it's happening, lots of activity all the time. Um, right. So that's that's sort of what that's sort of how I work with myself when I can't hear anything, unless I really unless I really pay attention. It's not that it's not there. Uh, I, I totally agree. And it's actually quite noisy. <laughs> Whenever you when if you can slow it way down, it's actually quite noisy. All this activity is happening in there, which is what you can hear with the stethoscope. You know, all that vibration that's occurring there is uh, when amplified. It's like oh, you know, if you ever had a um, an ultrasound, you know, you, there's a lot of a lot of noise going on there. Okay, anybody else? All right. Let's uh, let's have some fun. Okay, so we're gonna take that same idea and apply it to. Let's first begin by establishing our three pillars. Hmm. Uh, what this does is it plugs us into the big chi. And it allows for um, us to unkink the hose, to get coherent, unkink the hose. And we establish tensegrity in the system too. So feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, turn to the right, step out with your left foot, and then turn back to center. I feel the balls of both feet. The weight is spread throughout the foot, but you want to really focus on the ball. That's your, that's the connection point. That opens the gate to the kidney one point, which allows that kidney chi to circulate throughout your body. So the bubbling well, kidney one point, activates that kidney chi. Reach with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Tuck in the chin. Relax your lower back, allow your pelvis to to level out. Drop your Wei Lu at the coccyx. Drop that. So you're simultaneously dropping your Wei Lu and reaching with your Ni Wan at the crown. As you do that, you're lengthening the spine. Point your index fingers, feel the energetic coherence. Reach with your elbows and round the arms a little bit, opening the shoulder joints, unkinking the hose at the shoulders. And release the quad, spiral down and, and just let that go. So you're feeling yourself sitting down into your legs. So you're simultaneously sitting into the legs and reaching with the crown, creating tensegrity along the, the spine in the dural tube, unkinking the hose in the dural tube allows for the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely. And feel into your hands. Feel the enhanced circulation. Feel into your feet.
Use your diaphragm as you breathe. And as you inhale, simultaneously lift gently on the per perineum. In the wee in point between your genitals and your anus. And this allows for the kidney chi and all the yin chi's to move through your legs and into your torso. So this is the most yin point on your, your torso, the hui yin. Allows you to access more of that yin energy, which is going to feed your kidneys. Now, breathe in through your left hand, feel your index finger, breathe in through the finger to your left hand. Allow that to circle into your bone marrow in your left arm, cross your shoulders and out through the fingertips of your right hand. Feel fingertips of the right hand point with the index finger, breathe in through the fingertips, feel the bone marrow in the right arm. Cross the shoulders and down through the fingertips in the left hand. So we're establishing a pattern here, something that you won't have to consciously maintain once we get, once the body gets the feeling of this, at least for now, breathe into the, the toes of the left foot, up the leg, up to the hips, allow it to sink into the bone marrow, feel the bone marrow in the left leg, and exhale through the toes of the right foot. Press down with the big toe, the right foot, breathe in through the toes, up the leg, into the hips. Feel it into the bone marrow and exhale through the toes of the left foot. Now simultaneously, bring it into the fingers and the toes and allow it to circu circulate through the, all the, your skeleton, all the bones in your body, up your spine, into your head, collarbone, ribs. Each breath allow that <laughs> to circulate and just feel like you're whole system is getting inflated with chi as you inhale. And it circulates, animates, activates, energizes, cleanses, rejuvenates, and each time you exhale through the fingers, through the toes, you feel stale energy, debris, stale chi being discharged. Feel the balls of your feet, set the knees, bow forward slightly. Bring your arms up, reach with the wrists, reach, reach with the fingers.
Feel the energy permeating into the bones, into the bone marrow. Press down, sink. So the more you can feel into your bones, the way they're aligned, the way they're stacked, the way, they're, the way they fit together, the more awareness you bring to that, the more energy you bring to that, the more circulation. And seems to be a really good thing to do for your health. Okay. So, bow forward slightly, feel the balls, set the knees, and arms come up, reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Reach, feel your between your shoulder blades, feel your back opening up, expanding. Feel the connection between the arms. Rotate your forearms. Feel a circuit. Between you know, made by your two arms. We got a gap there, and the energy is going to arc across that gap, circulate around. Being fed by the big chi, the earth chi coming up through the feet, the heaven chi coming up through the crown, coming down through the crown. Being guided by your attention and intention, your E. And drop your elbows. Palms facing you. Arms at a 45. Forearms at a 45. And as you, you're going to turn your forearms. And as you do that, breathe in through the fingertips, through the toes, you know, about the whole system. So inhale, breathe in. Feel that it condensing into your bone marrow and then Exhale, discharge. And then through the fingers, the toes, circulating through the bones, through the whole body. Exhale. Inhale, breathe in. Continue, breathing into the fingers, the toes circulating throughout your whole body. Exhaling and discharging anything that doesn't need to be there. come down and 
Feel into your hands, feel the increased circulation. Feel the capillaries kind of being taken to the maximum. Rotate the palms forward. As you inhale, reaching out, feel the tensegrity. As you reach out, feel that circulating throughout the bones and rotate your forearms and exhale. Discharging. Rotate the forearms. Inhale. Breathing into the toes, into the fingers. Rotate. Exhale. Rotate. Inhale. Reach open between your shoulder blades. Rotate, exhale, feel the tensegrity. You're reaching out, lengthening. Feel the connective tissue system from your fingertips through your feet and into the earth. Rotate your forearms, inhale. Reach. Extend, open between your shoulder blades. Rotate and exhale. Rotate. Inhale. Reach and exhale. Now feel into that. Yeah. Feel all the motion in your stillness. Tune into the insubstantiality. Feel the activity that's occurring inside your body. You don't have to identify it, just feel it.
feel the ball of your right foot. So let the right knee spiral down to the left. Sink into your right leg and step in. Take a deep breath. As you're pressing down, change that chi to shen, to spirit. Emptying out, discarding the chi, and allowing it to transform. Into shen. Feel into the stillness. Okay. Okay. Have a seat, please. Hey, Rick. Paul Luke. Hey, Rick. Big question. When I'm breathing in through my fingers and or toes and then exhaling through my fingers and or toes, am I also breathing in through my nose and exhaling through my mouth yes. at the same time? Yes. I am. Yes. And your skin and your hair and everything else. But it's just the focus is a, it's, it's an image, you know, it's an image to, to breathe right. in that way. And that way, it, it's a way of attuning to the physicality and to actually get into the feeling of it. But is it the same timing? In other words, yes. the length of time that I'm, okay, so I'm breathing yes. through everything at the same time. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. You bet. Okay, any, how'd it go for everybody? Good, 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 good. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Richard. Um, with the breathing in and out, if I, um, if I needed more breathing in than I had, I would just stop and let it circulate for a second. Good idea. And then continue to breathe in if I needed to. I didn't feel as though I had to breathe the image out and in with my breath, just coordinate it the best I could. I agree. I agree. There's nothing, nothing magical about that particular step. It's just a, a way of focusing. Cool. Anybody else? Scott. So a uh, comment and a question. Okay. So I've actually been doing this for a while. You know, I was every night before I go to bed, I was doing what you had us do. And I was, I got tired of all the stupid steps. And I said this, I don't need all these steps. And I just started doing what you had me doing, you know, had us doing breathing in and out of, of the bones. Beautiful. And I found that I was having a hard time, you know, it's like some places like my skull and stuff. And I, and I realized I started thinking about, you know, the skeleton that they have in every science class. And thinking about the actual skeleton and that really helped with the visualization and then i could just like kind of feel the whole thing good and the question was you had said something about you just do this all day long i mean obviously you're not doing that whole exercise all day long so you just kind right. of breathe into the bones and out or right kind of what you're what you're talking about that is so we did it as a concentrated exercise here to create a big impact like this you know this is, a, this is a statement for your body mind. It says, hey, body mind, notice this. There's something going on here. And it says, oh, hey, I like that. And then the rest of the time, you can do what, what, what you're talking about. That is, you know, like I say, you're sitting at a stoplight and, 
you got 30 seconds, so why not breathe a couple of breaths, you know, and 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 circulate your chi, you know, yeah. What could it hide? So it's uh, um, so that's my attitude towards. So instead of it being a, a thing, oh, I got oh, it's it's six a.m. I got to go do my bone breathing. It's like no, you're doing it here, there, everywhere, and it just becomes part of who you are. It's like ah, you know, and you know, it doesn't even take a minute to to get to create an effect particularly as you start to attune to your sensory neural network and you get to like tuning into the insubstantiality of all that's going on there. And then like, oh boy, this is fun. Good plan. Cool. Jonathan. So the fascia is like an uninterrupted substance, right? I mean, it, it's a continual... But bones are joined by ligaments, right? So I'm just yeah. wondering a little bit, like I could see like if I breathe into the fascia and then it all becomes, you know, one continuous connection there. Is there something about bones though, as a system or, or I'm not sure, like I can feel a bone, I can feel that cotton bone thing, but all the bones together with that, I, 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 you know what I mean? Because it's not like the fascia, right? Well, the fascia is a, uh... It's an unbroken um, web right. that includes uh, the ligaments, tendons, bones, cartilage. Ah. So it's all part of that. And the bones are just connective tissue. It's all part of the connective tissue system, which is, which is this magic web that is... Okay. Um, and, okay. and what bones are is these, it's connective tissue that has little pockets where calcium deposits and mineral deposits can get dumped to create a hardness there. Ah, thank and you. And you're, okay. you're, you're, you're part of the, uh, the bones there. There's the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts, and I forget which one is which, but the one is tearing your bones apart millions of cells, I don't know, probably you know, a minute or something and, and throwing, creating new ones. And so healthy bones are constantly being destroyed, but they're constantly being created. And if you can help them along by bringing more chi into the, into the operation, then you get these lively bones that have density, but they're also supple they're not brittle okay, okay? Yeah. so you get this so there's the drugs that people take for osteoporosis say which are not great because they they interfere with that process of of, of creation and destruction so you want to get it so that you are actually activating your your the creation of your own skeleton and this the, the bones are just another part of the connective tissue system well, thank you. I never, you know, I never thought about that. You're saying that bones are essentially just like fascia. Other things, there's, the material isn't really different. Something's added into it, but it's not some it's, special matter or something. That's like it, it, it's 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 connective tissue that allows for wow. that has pockets for mineral deposits, just like lipocytes are connective tissue that allow, have pockets for fat deposits. Wow. And so they're just. It's all just. You know, if you were to, to discard everything else and just leave the connective tissue system, you would have basically the outline of a of a body. Well, that's that's great because like Scott was saying, you know, that that anatomy thing, I've seen that like an Alexander teacher's hanging in the closet, and it looks, you know, like a dead, you know, even though it's got all the structure, you don't associate it with a living body so much. You, you associate it as the frame on which the life goes on to. But what you're saying is. It's as much life as anything else. You just, you know, it's maybe a little denser, but material-wise, it's not something, you know, in, uh, categorically different than the living right. tissue of the body. That's right. that's very helpful. Thank you. That skeleton is just um, the body with all the fun stuff gone. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So the you that's 
part of the error that people had is was in getting their concept of the body by having these things which are bodies taken apart and and right. left right without the stuff that makes it human without right. stuff that makes it alive right. it's gone so it's like you know it kind of creates this this image of of this you know the the skeleton from the uh, from the graveyard right scott yeah, uh, Ethan actually talked about that, and I, I thought it was very enlightening. Is that you know, yeah, we 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 think bones are strong and brittle like that. They're not anything like that when they're alive. They're very flexible. Right. That's why it's very hard to break a bone because they can actually flex a bit. Right. That's right. We're just so, we're just so used to that image of a skeleton that we just think that's what it right. is. It's right. Hard to get over it, actually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Cool. Anybody else? Dennis. Yeah, so so what you're saying is it's the intent that drives. Look, I, I was trying to get it, get get it to go into my back. And it was coming up my arms and my legs, but it's really just where I intended to go, right? There's no real well, exercise. Feel it. Forget intention. Feel it. Feel it. Feel no. your back. Feel, feel your back. It. And and you know, if if you um, if you're having trouble, you know feeling it without just sit in a straight back chair and lean back against the the back of the chair and 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 oh okay there's my back and then feel okay. into that and breathe and just feel that and that the chi will go that so the, the this 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 idea of sensory neural network i cannot stress this too much this is the key kids this is feeling would be an end result feeling would be like an end result your intention is driving the chi, but once it gets to my back or wherever, that's like after the fact. It's when you when you feel it. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I guess uh, sure. But if you feel it, it the the chi will follow. Chi will follow. Okay. Yeah. The chi will follow. The uh, once once you feel that, the chi will follow. Valerie. Um, that's what. Dennis was just talking about, I realized that um, I was leaving like my scapula, you know, scapulas out and the bones in my face. But I would, did just what you were talking about. I let myself feel them. And then, yes, I knew, okay, yeah, we're, we're on the train. <laughs> we're Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because those are areas that you can forget, you know? Yeah, oh, and so easy, yeah. so easy to just put your hands on your face and, and remember you got one. And <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, oh, oh yeah, skull. yeah, I had that, that thing. Yeah, yeah, I got it now. Yeah, I remember. About your skull, <laughs> you know, this, this, the front part, I yeah. kind of just, and Scott just pointed out teeth as well. Teeth um, too. Yeah. Teeth especially, yeah. You yeah. can run your tongue, you can run your tongue over your teeth to get the feeling. You can feel it with your tongue, but you can also feel your tongue with your teeth. And when you do that, it brings chi into your teeth, which then helps all kinds of goodness there too. Okay, anybody else? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. right. yes. Uh, I, I just want to uh, touch on the, something that, uh, so I have it uh, correctly. When you're breathing in, your arms are going up. Are you also drawing in, uh, you're drawing in uh, your fingertips, you're at the same time, you're drawing in at the, uh, by way of the toes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can, you, can, you can also do it just through one hand. You, you uh -huh. can do it through one hand, two hands, hands and feet. You can do it through the top of your head. You, anything you can feel, you can, you can, you can imagine. Because we're just talking about imagining the chi coming in there because it's, it is coming in there, but we're just allowing, we're creating an image so that we can feel. Ah. But going back to that feeling thing, if you can, if you feel it, it will come. Okay. okay? That's it. <laughs> That's it. All right. Yeah. Very good. Cool. Okay. Thank you all so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Yes. Thank, you, Maria. Thank, Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night.